Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A wild night outside a local strip club as the San Antonio police starting their day with several different investigations. They say two people suffered gunshot wounds while a car also was riddled with bullets. As Katrina Weber explains, the complicated scene was really the result of two separate shootings in the same place. All the lights and action at the strip club are in the parking lot as San Antonio police try to sort out what happened here. This is their second call this early morning at Sugars near Loop 410 in Vance Jackson. This time they say it was for a fight involving a group of men around 2 a.m. Police say security guards had tried to use pepper spray to break it up, then shot a 21-year-old man after he shot and wounded someone else involved in the fight. The 23-year-old man who he shot was rushed to a hospital. Police say the shooter got away, but then turned up later at a hospital himself in critical condition. While all of that was happening around the side of the building, San Antonio police were still in the area. They had been answering a different call about someone shooting into a car, and it seems this car took on a whole lot of gunfire. Even in the dark, you could clearly see the damage, how multiple bullets tore into the hood and shattered the window. From what police say, the car shooting seems to be a separate case. They believe it was the result of an earlier disagreement between a man and woman inside the strip club, not related to the other violence outside. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We may be in full rodeo spirit, but we're also getting into the fiesta spirit as well. Starting tomorrow, the Battle of Flowers Association begins to collect over one million pounds of food as part of the Valentine's gift to the San Antonio Food Bank. This year's parade theme is Viva Amor 2024, and Food Bank CEO Eric Cooper is going to be serving as Grand Marshal for the Battle of Flowers Parade. Donations will be accepted starting tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. and they're gonna go every day until parade day on Friday, April 26th. And just a reminder, NIOSA has released their medals and here's what they're gonna look like this year. They have two new medals. One shows the sun, the other includes the popular beer cup. We've got information on KSAT.com on how you can get your medals. And as we gear up for Fiesta, you need to know the dates. It starts on April 18th with Fiesta Fiesta. It ends 10 days later on April 28th. The Battle of Flowers Parade starts at 1030 on Friday, April 26th. That's a big one. The four-night Fiesta, Nyosa, is from 5 until 1030 from April 23rd through the 26th at La Vita historic village. You can find all of the information you need about this on our website at kset.com. And again, we're going to be broadcasting Fiesta Fiesta, Battle of Flowers, Fiesta Flambeau, and more right here on KSAT 12. It's going to be another great one. We can only hope that the weather's like this, maybe a tad warmer, but at least those kind of skies would be much appreciated. That would be nice. And those are the kind of skies, by the way, we need on April 8th, too, for the eclipse. Ah, yeah, that's right. Uh, so, and, and so much going on. Uh, to start 2024. It's exciting times here in San Antonio. Yes, we do have the rodeo going on right now, too. Good weather today. We've got blue skies. Yeah, it's been a little windy, but these winds are going to calm down as we head into the afternoon. 55 right now in San Antonio, 57 in New Braunfels, 58 in Seguin. We did have a wind chill earlier. Those have since gone away as temperatures have warmed, uh, but we're still getting those gustier winds gusting to 21 miles per hour at the airport, gusting to 18 in Holotus. We're still going to see gusts in the 2025 20, range here over the next couple of hours. But then I think these winds start to relax a little bit. And you'll certainly notice that by tonight as these winds uh, really slack off. Our KSAT 12 hour forecast 60 at 3 o'clock. Look for a high right around 62 near perfect weather 58 at 6 o'clock. But with those lighter winds, clear skies tonight, you know what's going to happen. Those temperatures will dip and dip quickly 46 at 11 o'clock 45 by midnight. Let's take a look at some of the weather headlines here. Valentine's Day. I know you're already making the plans. Know that clouds roll back in on Valentine's Day. It'll be cloudy by the afternoon. Next chance of rain that shows up Thursday and Friday. It's a small chance, but it is there. Uh, we're going to talk about it. Models are changing on us a little bit, and I'll explain here in just a second. And then what about another freeze? Possible, possible Sunday morning. More on that for you here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Now to that shooting at Joel Osteen's megachurch in Houston. Two people injured. The female shooter shot dead. 
There was a search warrant that was released just a few minutes ago identifying the shooter as Janice Ivan Moreno. That warrant released by the Montgomery County District Attorney's Office as officers surrounded her home in Conroe. That's about 40 miles north of Houston. ABC's Rita Roy with how the church congregation is saying they're keeping the faith. Investigators scouring this Texas home looking for potential evidence after police say a woman opened fire inside celebrity pastor Joel Austin's mega church on Sunday afternoon. This live stream capturing the moment the gunshots interrupted Pastor Jorge Basave, several people appearing to descend down an escalator. Levi Andrade also recording. I was just walking uh, up the stairs and when I got when I got on the top, like he started, they started shooting. I don't know, like, I just heard, but it was like more than 10 shots. Like. The armed woman in her 30s entering the Houston church just before Spanish service was about to begin with hundreds of parishioners, according to police. She entered the building. She was armed with a long rifle and a trench coat with a backpack, accompanied by a small child, approximately four to five years old. The shooter was shot and killed by two off-duty police officers. During the gunfire, that young child also shot, now in critical condition. They, they were repetitive, boom, 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 and I yelled, Mom! A 57-year-old man also injured. We don't understand why these things happen, but we know God's in control, and we're going to pray for that little five-year-old boy and pray for the lady that was deceased. Police say before the shooter died, she claimed to have a bomb, but officers say no explosives were found. So far, no information has been released on the motive. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, another busy week ahead of the Justice Center. Several court hearings expected today. Last week, Felix Jesus Hernandez's murder trial ended in a guilty verdict. Hernandez convicted of fatally shooting a woman and then dumping her body in front of a vacant home back in February 2022. Last week, a jury convicted Hernandez of killing 42-year-old Victoria Stampley. Stampley was found in the 200 block of Post Avenue. That's not far from Broadway and Breckenridge Park. She left a bar on the St. Mary Strip with Hernandez. His girlfriend, after an argument, broke out inside the car. Hernandez's girlfriend testified he shot Stampley. The jury took about four hours Friday to convict Hernandez. The punishment phase will be going on today. This is a first-degree felony charge. Therefore, Hernandez is looking at five to 99 years or life in prison. The jury will be the ones that decide that sentence, which could come later today. Happening today, the permitting process for a new wastewater plant on the Helotus Creek begins. It's part of a plan by a developer who wants to build thousands and thousands of homes on the Guadalajara Ranch property. And if it's built, it would dump treated wastewater into Helotus Creek, which is raising concerns from some residents who say this water could end up in the Trinity Aquifer, even the Edwards Aquifer. Those neighbors have until today to contest that permitting process to Texas officials. A reminder, there is a recall happening right now for more than a do five dozen dairy products for potential contamination with listeria. The recall stemming from items made by Rizzo Lopez Foods include cheese enchiladas, bean dip, sour cream, plus a lot more. Fresh Creative Trader Joe's and Simply Fresh are now recalling products that were made with the ingredient that Rizzo Lopez Foods supplied. And they were sold at stores including H-E-B and Costco. The FDA says to throw these products away if they are in your home and check our website for that complete list. It's official. The Kansas City Chiefs needed overtime, but they did pull off another history-making night. Highlights from the Super Bowl win over San Francisco coming up. But first, how many people will be diagnosed with cancer at least once in their lifetime? And what you can do to help catch cancer in its early stages. It's a sad fact, one in three people will have cancer in their lifetime. It's the second leading cause of death in the United States, but there are many cancers that can be prevented if they're caught early. February is National Cancer Prevention Month, and over the weekend, a breast radiation oncologist at UT Health San Antonio joined Max Massey on leading essay to give us some ways we can lower our risks of cancer. 
Yes, the doctor joined us. We talked about a lot. We talked about why this month is so important to raise awareness to prevent so many types of cancers. And we also talked about this resurgence of cancer in younger individuals. She talked about some of the causes. Here's this conversation. Yes, we're seeing that across the board. So the question about why younger people are being diagnosed with cancer, it's thought to be um, due to the changing diet patterns and exercise patterns that we see modern in um, modern times. Also, genetic risk factors are probably at play here. We're also seeing things like HPV-related malignancies um, continue to rise as um, smoking-related cancers going down. We talked about a lot more. We also talked about the important screenings that you need to know about, and of course, when you can actually get them. And you can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of ksat.com. Join us every Sunday morning, 8 a.m. for Leading SA. Guys, we'll see you next Sunday. I, you just can't beat this. Look at that. Boom. Wow. I need, yeah, I was just saying, my daughter woke up in Lubbock at Texas oh. Tech yesterday with beautiful pictures she sent me of the snow there it uh, they got a lot of it and in fact coming up here at 12 30 we're going to show a satellite picture where you can see the snow that's still on the ground up in the texas panhandle so it's uh still a little bit icy up there we didn't get any of that here uh we got a little bit of rain not as much as we'd hoped so the aquifer is actually down today you should say down not up seven tenths of a foot seven six forty seven point one in your pollen count molds are low mount cedar is low cedar's still here uh, hopefully it goes right away within the next week. We're going to talk more about uh, rain chances coming up, Valentine's Day forecast, and our next cold front forecast on the other side of the break. So does the question of the day have anything to do with the Super Bowl Taylor Swift or Usher. <laughs> right. How about how about all those great ads that you saw ah, during oh. the Super Bowl? Which one did you like the most? Yeah. Well, overall, though, I, wanna, I got a question. What do you think of the ads overall? Because in the past few years, I mean, in general, mm, they haven't been as you is know. That, yeah. Is that, that was yeah. That okay. was that was yesterday. Mm. Yeah. First half they were terrible. <laughs> True. Uh, like but that. favorite ad of some of them. Oh, the, the Dunkin' Donuts ad by far. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was. That, now, yeah. Tom Brady was in a few ads. He, he was. Mm -hmm. and it's great, the little subtle, you know, little, mm -hmm. little sides and everything like that. I did like the State Farm with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That was, yeah. <laughs> Nabot. 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 Back and forth. <laughs> that they was were, pretty good, too. Some of so. them were very creative. <laughs> yes. Loved right. it. Scan the QR mm -hmm. code and... Let us know. Yeah. What was your favorite ad during the game last night? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just like how the game came out. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah that, that worked. We always like okay. when Patrick Mahomes wins. Right, when a local guy wins. Yeah, Texas Tech. All right, where it snowed mm -hmm. on, on yesterday. Yeah, we got a ton of snow actually up in parts of Amarillo and Lubbock. Part of a dynamic storm system that was supposed to bring us some decent rain here in San Antonio. Didn't really pan out. It was all around us if you look to the radar. But let me show you the drought monitor here. And you can see where the worst of the drought still is, okay? We've kind of outlined it for you. And that's Bandera to Kerrville over to parts of Kamau County. This is where we're still in extreme drought. And look at the rainfall total. So we did get the rain kind of falling in the right spots. Again, it necessarily wasn't here over San Antonio. We didn't see a ton. Uh, but there was some nice numbers, especially up towards Fredericksburg. So we should see this eat into the drought a little bit more. We continue to kind of chip away at this. And uh, it's so far, 2024 has been good to us. Uh, we do have more rain on the way, so there is more opportunities that head our way later this week. Right now, 55, dew point of 33. Northerly wind to 15, gusting to 21. So we're still getting some gusts 20 to 25, but it is a nice, nice day. I think a lot of us, you know, uh, slept past the alarm this morning. It was late last night watching the Super Bowl, uh, but it's turned into a nice day. Wind speeds are going to start to fall off as we head into the afternoon. Uh, we should see gusts really calm down by this evening and tonight. And with winds going calm, it'll be a chilly night. 60 at 3 o'clock. We top out at 62 today, 56 at 7 p.m. And then down into the 40s as early as 10 o'clock. Uh, and we'll start to see those wind chill values show up again, although the winds are light, so it's not going to be a, a big, big problem. Here's the setup. 
Uh, we have our area of low pressure spinning now over parts of Arkansas, and that's going to start to push east, take a lot of the rain and snow with it. Uh, and then on the back side of it, we've, we've still got that northerly wind, but it's starting to push away. Then we turn our attention to the west coast. Here comes our next storm system. Now tomorrow will be perfect. We're in between storm systems. We don't have the wind, sunny skies. Doesn't get much better. We'll have temperatures in the upper 60s. Uh, but by Wednesday, we've got another weak storm system starting to take shape. Now, this is going to go pretty far south. At least a lot of the energy is. Uh, so that's where most of the rain will be. But as early as Wednesday, because it's starting to move a little bit closer, we get an influx of clouds. So I'll warn you there, if you're planning out your Valentine's Day, know that it will be cloudy during the afternoon, maybe around dinner time. Uh, there's your Valentine's Day forecast. Uh, candle and the rose and all the all the stuff. Uh, 62 uh, is what we think will happen there around dinner time. Mostly cloudy skies, so you know, plan accordingly. Rain chances this week. I did up Friday a little bit, just looking at the new models. Looks like we could get some showers coming in late Thursday into Friday that could stick around. It, one thing's for sure, it'll be cloudy Thursday through. Uh, really Wednesday through Friday before we clear out on Saturday. So here's how I think it plays out. 67 tomorrow, as I said, beautiful. More clouds Wednesday for Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day. We add in that rain chance Thursday, cloudy 20%, 30% chance on Friday. And we'll get a very small chance early on Saturday as a strong front comes through. But most of Saturday uh, will just be mostly cloudy, 55. I do need to point out too that Sunday morning, we could be down at near freezing. So we're not done with those numbers just yet. Okay. Thank you, Justin. I liked your candle. It was even, the flame was flicking. That's the closest Justin's ever going to come to giving oh, flowers. Oh, no, and no. Fish. Don't get him in trouble, Ursula. <laughs> <laughs> the spurs are having a tough time on the road, but a break is coming. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. If these Kansas City Chiefs are not a dynasty yet, they have at least opened the door after they beat the San Francisco 49ers last night to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls in their third in the last five years. Let's take it to the first half. Not good. Didn't get really good and tense until the fourth quarter, so we're going to skip the first half and let's go just to the fourth quarter. Brock Purdy over the middle. Juwan Jennings is there on the slant. He's got it. Breaks a couple of tackles. Fights his way into the end zone. Touchdown. That drive kept alive by a 49ers converting on a fourth down on that drive. But the Chiefs blocked the extra point big. The 49ers led 16-13. Kansas City responds on their next drive. There's that block. That turned out to be yeah, maybe the game changer. Harrison Butner from 24 yards out. We're tied at 16, less than six minutes to go. San Francisco milking the clock now. Jake Moody nails a 53-yard field goal. San Francisco goes back in front, 19-16. But there's a minute and 53 seconds left in the game, which is more than enough time for Patrick Mahomes to work his magic. He drives the Chiefs down the field. Harrison Butner ties it at 19 with a 29-yard field goal. Three seconds left. We are going to overtime in Vegas. In the OT, the second one ever and first one since Super Bowl 51, Niners win the coin toss. They elect to take the ball. They drive it all the way down inside the red zone, but they have to settle for another field goal. Jake Moody from 27. Niners lead 22-19. Super Bowl overtime rules now say that each team gets a possession, so the Chiefs get their shot. Mahomes rolls to the right and then fires to a wide-open McColl Hardman Jr. Touchdown. Game over. Chiefs win their second straight Super Bowl. Here's the final. 25-22. Patrick Mahomes ties Joe Montana with three Super Bowl MVP awards, throwing for 333 yards, two touchdowns. I can't even explain what, what was going through my mind. I was just extreme joy. Um, didn't even know where to go. Um, but, it, I mean, just it's so excitement, man. I'm so proud of the team, so proud of the guys. And to battle to the very end, I mean, that's, that was a microcosm of our season. I said it, that everybody came together and we were able to get the win. And I hope people remember not only the greatness that we have on the field, but the way that we, we've done it. I mean, I, I feel like we, we enjoy it every single day. We have fun. We play hard. And it's not always pretty, but we just continue to fight to the very end. And I know you get fatigue of the team sometimes, of one team winning. But we try to enjoy it and just enjoy the moment that we have together, kind of what we can do every single day to, to bring the best out of each other. The first thing that comes of mind is just like when you have an opportunity like we did you know to to really you know put some points up on them and, and take it you got to take it man it's the super bowl we got a, a good team in the chiefs on the other side and um you know i think we had opportunities to do that and, and you felt we all fell short of it and moving forward with my career and you know if you get blessed enough to get in this kind of position again you I think you have to understand that and not, uh, learn the hard way 
So congratulations to the Chiefs. And talk about making things hard. The Spurs 0-3 on the current rodeo road trip. They haven't won on the road since January 20th. Not a surprise since they've only won 10 games so far this season. They lost to the Brooklyn Nets Saturday night. San Antonio got a lead in the first, but it didn't last long. Nets shot 56% from the field, including 17 threes. Brooklyn led by as many as 28. Spurs lost 123-103. That's the fifth time in the last six games they lost by double digits. This week, the Spurs take on the Toronto Raptors. So they're going to Toronto, eh? Going on up there, and then they start moving towards the West Coast a little bit. But on the way, they got to stop and play the Dallas Mavericks. And then after that game, it's the All-Star weekend, which means Victor Wimbanyama and Jeremy Sohan will be part of the All-Star weekend. So they'll get a little break, have a little fun, and then get back at it next week. But there's the two to finish up before the game, before the break. Okay. Still ahead in our 1230 half hour, the three main signs you need to look for to make sure that your tires are safe and you don't get a blowout. Plus the impact St. Philip's College has had on Black History Month. And that's coming up after the break. Throughout the month of February, we are showing you different ways to celebrate Black History Month. And today we are spotlighting the nation's only Hispanic serving institution and historically black college. It's right here at St. Phillips. Tiffany Huerta shows us the impact that the college has and how it went from a day school to now a junior college. Seeing St. Bowden all over the campus, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel proud and thankful and just a pleasant sacrifice and happy to be part of the legacy. Jennifer Walker grew up hearing stories about her great aunt, St. Artemisia Bowden. Seeing her school every day was a constant reminder that this is what's in your DNA. For 52 years, Bowden led St. Philip's College. She was 23 when she came here and she got on a train ride all by herself. She left her good job <laughs> that she had in North Carolina to take a chance on an opportunity. James Steptoe Johnston, Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of West Texas, chose Bowden to lead St. Philip's Normal and Industrial School. He found Miss Bowden and brought her here to create a grammar school. But history and the legend of this individual is that she took it much further. Not only a grammar school, but a vocational school, an industrial school, and now a college. This wall on campus is a memorial and recognition for all the contributions of past leaders, including Bowden. Dr. Adina Williams Lawson, president of St. Philip's College, says Bowden overcame many challenges. During the Depression, the church separated from supporting the college. It was left to Artemisia to keep the school afloat. She brought her family members here. She quit taking a salary. And then she developed many different strategies to raise money for the college. There are pictures of Bowden around campus, including Dr. Lawson's office. This is Black History Month, and what it means to me is that it is a time to celebrate and acknowledge the contributions of our elders, the people that made a difference. This month, Walker is remembering not only the past, but the present and the future. We're able to look back on what our ancestors accomplished. We're able to be in the present moment and appreciate it as the gift that it is from God, and just be able to love on our family and give educational information and inspiration to everybody that we meet. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. There are so many events that you can participate in, including on February 13th at 11 o'clock, the MLK Turban Student Center. They are going to be sharpening your knowledge of black history with a Kahoot trivia game. Also on February 13th at 12 o'clock, there's gonna be a soul food tasting. Uh, St. Philip's College culinary students are gonna be preparing Soul Food Dishes, and that is going to take place at the Tourism, Hospitality, and Culinary Arts Building. A lot to do in Black History Month. We'll be right back. Live cam. That's where we're coming back to this. This is a beautiful shot right there. Yeah, it 57 is. 57 degrees. Is this not a perfect way to um, enjoy the middle of February? It's uh, close to it. I mean, it was a little breezy this morning, yes. 
but those skies cannot get any bluer. Uh, it's a good way to start a Monday because we all know that you know, Mondays can be tough. Uh, I want to show you the satellite picture uh, across Texas, and this is what we were alluding to earlier. The storm system that brought us uh, some of the storms over the weekend is pushing east. It's producing severe weather now across parts of Florida. There is a tornado watch box there, heavy rain around Atlanta, even a little bit of snow there across parts of Arkansas. But you see this area right here? That is not cloud cover. Notice it's not moving. That's snow. We can actually pick it up from our visible satellite picture looking down on Earth. And a little closer look there, you can see where the heaviest snow fell right between Amarillo and Lubbock. So plain view right along Interstate 27 there. Still snow on the ground, even at this hour. Skies are clear, uh, but there was just a ton of snow that fell. And it uh, is a winter wonderland up across parts of the Texas Panhandle today. You'll notice, though, they are above freezing now. Uh, they'll be a little bit cooler today because... When there's snow on the ground, it tends to keep temperatures down. 35 in Lubbock, 38 in Amarillo. Weird 55, no threat of snow for us. Uh, and the forecast for today takes us up to about 62. Pretty nice, blue skies. Uh, there is some warmer weather on the way and some rain chances too. Another look at that seven-day forecast in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. A scary situation for a person driving a car on the northeast side last night. According to police, a tire blew out, and that caused the driver to crash into an apartment home. Police tell us around 1130 last night, the man was driving on the access road of Loop 410 and Starcrest when that tire blew. The blowout caused the man to go off the road and crash into the office of the apartment complex. Luckily, the man was not injured, and the structural integrity of the building checked out by fire crews. AAA says tire blowouts can be caused by many things, like too much or too little air pressure. It can also be caused by tread wear on the tire. AAA says if you notice unusual vibrations or thumping noises or your car is pulling to one side or the other, then something could be wrong with your tires. They say to safely pull over the side of the road and check your tires out. We love it when we can see the results and many kids were able to get their new shoes today thanks to Savatos and SAPD's Share the Shoes distribution. We promoted it all month long in December and during the last few months of 2023. The Share the Shoes campaign was collecting shoes for kids of all kinds uh, and getting shoes to the people who need them most. Organizers say Savatos uh, will help these kids by making, giving them these shoes, and it's going to help them excel in school. This is your foundation. You know, if you are, if your feet are cold, if your shoes do not fit, if you're, if you're, if you're hurting because your shoes are too small, how in the world are you going to be able to study? Oh yeah, through the Share the Shoes drive, more than 700 pairs of shoes were collected at, for the North uh, substation at SAPD. Still coming up, how Taylor Swift was able to help families come together to watch her boyfriend in the Super Bowl. Aw, but first, the March primaries are less than a month away, and we have the important dates you need to know in order to get your votes in on time. It's coming up after the break. New deadlines coming up before next month's state primary election. To apply for a mail-in ballot, you have until February 23rd. Also, you can vote early from February 20th through March 1st. Election day will be March 5th. We've got voting information in all the places where you can vote early on KSET.com. All right. Beautiful day. Postcard kind of day. Yes, we're still in winter, y'all. And it's 57 degrees, not really climbing that fast. It was, uh, I was kind of hoping we'd be in the 70s by now. Not today, not today. <laughs> It'll be nice though. We'll make it into the 60s this afternoon. A little less wind this afternoon. Hey, I want to show you a countdown real quick. We're just 56 days away from our total solar eclipse. So very excited here in the uh, KSAT weather department. And there's a lot of events going on. If you want to check out, we've compiled a list on our uh, on kset.com we're going to talk about that coming up also uh, so far today we've hit uh, 57 is our high so far so that's actually the high the low 42 records are 84 and 4 set back in 1922 and way back in 1899. i've got some warmer weather on the way plus rain chances too another look at seven day is straight ahead
It may be only February, but the April eclipse is top of mind for many people, especially in our weather department. Mm. The eclipse is taking place on the 8th, and thousands of people are going to get the chance to see it. We're going to help, too. Yeah, what would you say, 56 days? 56 days. Many of the people are going to be coming to our area, and there's going to be a lot of events that you can go and see. Right now on KSET.com, we've got a full list of all the eclipse events happening on the 8th. There's going to be events taking place here in San Antonio and Bernie and Kerrville, plus many more areas. Wherever you decide to watch the eclipse, remember, wear your eclipse glasses before and after totality. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's really important to mention, we're going to be covering this live on our air we are. as well. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're uh, going to be streaming. Uh, yeah. Adam and I are planning to be up in Fredericksburg, but we're going to have cruise all around and I just added an event on there Del Rio's having a big uh, oh, called solar fest they got John Michael Montgomery's coming out there wow. what's the path called is, path, is of there, path of totality path of totality yes. so and we're right in right right there so northwest San Antonio is hill country mostly all of the hill country yeah. is within the path but it is uh, there's gonna be a lot of people coming to town uh, from all over the world uh, and hotels are already booked up. It's it's a it's a whole thing. So make sure you start planning it's out. It's a your, thing. It is. It's it's a big one. Start planning out what you're what you're going to do on that day. Hey, I want to show you a picture here on our KSET Connect. Uh, blue skies and the first red bud this season. That is nice. It's starting to bloom. Now here's the problem. These uh, these trees and these flowers get confused because it's been warm, right? We haven't had a freeze since the big one there in uh, January. But coming up on Sunday, we're going to get close. It's not a big freeze, but I think we can get down close to freezing by Sunday morning. And I'll show you that forecast here in just a second. First, let's talk about the rainfall. We're at 7.5 now. We, five nine. we added a little bit over the weekend. Uh, we're still 4.88 above average. Still doing really well. Del Rio added some rain too. So they've cut into the deficit just a little bit. But some more would be nice. And as we look at the forecast, 20% Thursday, uh, up Friday to 30%. The models have been kind of waffling back and forth on how the rain looks by the end of the week. But I, I think at least some of us get some light showers. Now, this is not going to be heavy. I can tell you that. It's just light rain. Uh, but we may get to add to our totals a little bit. Thursday, Friday, and very early on Saturday. Not today. Uh, blue sky is not a cloud in the sky. 55 at the airport, 57 New Braunfels, 58 Seguin, 52 Bernie, 53 in Curve. Always love these days after the front comes through. It just clears everything out. Uh, and you get these just beautiful, beautiful hues of blue in the sky. 59 Bernie. That's what we're expecting today. 64 Bandera, 59 for our friends in Gonzales. If you're watching us from Floresville, 64 for you. Close to perfect. Uh, except for those gusty winds, right? And those winds will start to die down. Uh, we're getting those gusty winds with a tight pressure gradient on the backside of this low that uh, came through Texas and now it's starting to push east and away from us. So tomorrow looks good. We've got cloud free skies, but clouds start to increase on Wednesday. We're going to see those thicken up too. So Valentine's Day could be a little gray, especially during the afternoon and evening hours. Then we start to watch for some of these showers. Uh, this is Thursday and the rain's going to be coming up from the south. Some light showers, and I think we could see a little bit more of that on Friday, depending on what model you look at. But the best uh, chance for rain is going to be San Antonio and points south in this case, where it's been, it's been kind of flipped lately, where the hill country has better rain chances. In this case, it's going to be San Antonio and those to the south that will have the best odds at rain. And you can see this with the dew point trend. Very dry today and tomorrow, but those dew points start to jump up. So we'll have some moisture available Thursday and Friday before we get a cold front on Saturday that uh, knocks temperatures back down. This one's going to be rather strong, 55. And then I talked about the uh, low Sunday morning, 32. So we could get another light freeze back in the forecast. Uh, it's still very much a possibility we could get freezes even into March, guys. Couple more days to buy the flowers, Justin. Yes, ma'am. OK. <laughs> this Rodeo Remembers, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. In the early days of rodeo, the talents of both cowboys and cowgirls were on display. But one accident led to a major setback. As America moved west, women learned to rope and ride, but working herds wasn't considered women's work. 
However, by the late 1800s, Wild West shows began making cowgirls like Annie Oakley and Lucille Mulhall famous. By the early 1900s, women began to rodeo. The first professional female athlete was Prairie Rose Henderson. Known for her flashy fashion sense and daring saddle skills, she became a world champion bronc rider in 1911. In the 1920s, women were competing in a third of the nation's rodeos, but in 1929, a tragedy changed everything. Bronc rider Bonnie McCarroll caught her foot in her stirrup after being thrown. After her death, rodeos began replacing cowgirl competitions with ranch girl beauty contests. But attitudes did change. In 1942, women's barrel racing became an accepted rodeo event, and the first all-women's rodeo was held in Bonham, Texas. These rodeos were exhibitions, not official competitions, but a dispute over an Amarillo calf roping event led to the formation of the Girls' Rodeo Association in 1948. In the decades that followed, the GRA advanced the role of women in rodeo. In 1981, they changed their name to the Women's Professional Rodeo Association. Thanks to them, today's rodeos are proof that you can't keep a cowgirl down. Of course, we know the winners of the Super Bowl, the Chiefs, but many fathers are saying they're the winners, and it's all thanks to Taylor Swift. Can you believe that she's brought families together? ABC's Becky Worley explains Swift's impact on families who all came together to watch. Taylor Swift taking over Super Bowl 58. All eyes were on her as she smiled on the jumbotron, cheered on her team, and even downed an ice cold beverage with authority. Even the ads in this Cetaphil commercial leading up to the Super Bowl, dad has the friendship bracelets and his daughter's got the jersey. A touchdown, six points. The theme all over social media. I am so excited. My girls are finally interested in watching football with their dad. For Jamie Voorhees and his 11-year-old daughter, Bree, they now watch games together. But it wasn't just about her learning the nuances of the play-action pass. Bree kind of was introducing me to the music. We can kind of rock out together, and I'm definitely a Swifty now. But now, because of Taylor, it's made the weekends and watching football so much more meaningful, and it's just an amazing thing. But Dad's pretty pumped about the football bonding, too. Now, I can confidently say she can list off all 32 NFL teams without seeing a, a prompt. And they're not alone. Metrics from the first three weeks of Sunday Night Football showed a 53% spike in female teen viewers. And overall, throughout the season, a 9% uptick of women watching. It's clear that this has brought dads and daughters together. And I mean that literally and symbolically. It's brought many more women watching this sport. And the NFL recognizing the opportunity, just announcing a licensing deal with Kristen Juszczyk that will bring her football jersey-inspired creations to the masses. Granted, this incredibly creative 49er wife did get some help from a Chiefs fan. Go white, but it's not just pink jerseys and pop culture. The NFL promoting girls' flag football, highlighting more women involved from the sidelines to the upper echelons of NFL organizations, and adding just a lot more representation of women as fans. And having young girls and women see that, I think changes the game of football for them, but also changes their perceptions about what women can and should be doing in our world. So that was Becky Worley. So that means that there's a lot of bunch of dads now, Swifties. So it worked both ways. It is. So how cool is that? See, I've got my, I've got my friendship yeah. bracelet. And you know, what's, I forget the song. I say live, Mike and Fiona probably know a lot of Swifty <laughs> songs, don't you, Mike? Mike knows. Oh, he knows. She that. does. No. Oh, it's, Shake it's It Off. Him. That's He's the one, the one I'm one always thinking about. Swifty. Shake it off. <laughs> Hey, Valentine's is coming yes. up here, and, and we've you got know, some really great gift yeah. ideas to make your Valentine's Day even sweeter. Right, you can get chocolate, or you can get chocolates Ooh. from this gentleman right here, Matt Willis from Swiss Chocolate Shop. What are we making today? Today we're going to be making bourbon caramel bonbons. Just the name alone is going to win your Valentine yes. over. Mm -hmm. And First what, of all, look at how beautiful that is, yes. okay? Yep. What have we here? This is one of our leftover special order uh, flavors. It is a tiramisu bar. Ooh. Look at that filling. Mm. I got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to tell you where you can make these two. And even a little kind of like a chocolate covered strawberry, but not quite there, so. All right, we are looking at some great Valentine looks that will break the budget. We're going to show you some of those.
Uh, interesting that uh, Valentine and Ash Wednesday coincide. So, of course, Fat Tuesday is tomorrow, and our good friends at NOLA have some really good sweets for you. And we continue to celebrate National Pizza Day. Our Jen is out live, and we will show you some more. And you thought football ended yesterday? No. Uh, indoor football is going on. Gunslingers have a new coach. We are going to meet him. And he and I have a lot in common. Shocking. I know. <laughs> All that and more. When SA Live continues from historic Market Square.